How's it going everybody? So straight from the bat. No, this is not one of those videos where I lure you in with the title and then proceed to explain why it's never going to happen. Quite the contrary here. I was very surprised myself when I did read about this. So before we go into any detail, in case someone doesn't know, what is crossplay? This basically means that all platforms can play together. Xbox can play with PlayStation, PlayStation can play with PC. Well, you get the idea. That this will obviously come with some problems is to be expected. Early in October, Sony said that their crossplay feature is officially out of beta and that it is now available to all developers. We will see more and more titles that release with this feature, latest being the new Call of Duty. As to be expected, game developers will want to participate. The goal of live service games is to keep players as long as possible and thus increase the chances of them spending money on microtransactions. So obviously, the more populated and the life a game feels, the more likely it is for its players to stay, and consolidating the player base of previously three separate platforms would certainly achieve that. But why do I even mention this? For Honor is not a new title, we're about to move into year 4 of the game's life cycle. This statement here is what prompted me to make the video. Ubisoft CEO Yves Guillemot said the following our goal is to put crossplay on all the PvP games we have. And that can only mean two games Rainbow Six Siege and For Honor. Those are their two big PvP live service games. I will link you guys the articles in the description down below, but they're all rather short and sadly don't contain any further infos about the when and why not. But let's just look at what that could mean for the game and what obstacles will lie ahead of us. First of all, when might this happen? This is pure speculation on my part, but I doubt we'll see this until the next generation for consoles gets released. Both Sony as well as Microsoft announced that their new consoles will be backwards compatible, at least with the previous generation. So who knows what kind of other updates we'll see for current games. But like I said, this is just me making a wild guess. Might be sooner, might be later. But one thing that For Honor has going for itself that many other games don't, For Honor is one of the few games that you can truly play with both controller or mouse and keyboard. There is no significant difference in playability. There are minor ones and you can make certain arguments for blocking being slightly easier with mouse and deflecting being slightly easier with controller. But all in all, you can play at the highest level with either input device. This is not the case for many other genres. FPS games will struggle immensely with that. Fortnite is one of the few games that has been crossplay for quite some time now, and even in a game as casual as that, the differences are immense. Developers will struggle selling this to their customers. I don't think we will face this issue with For Honor at all. No platform is at a disadvantage because of their input devices. That is a huge plus already. But on the other hand, there's the hardware discrepancy. Something that has always been a thing in PC gaming, but never one in the world of consoles. Well, until they got greedy this generation and released a stronger version mid-life cycle. But they still stuck to the fact that the performance of each game, mostly meaning the FPS, stayed the same. If only the improved version of the console could run the game at 60, then the game stayed locked at 30, meaning no one had a competitive advantage, or whatever the reason they gave for it. Point being, this way of thinking needs to go out of the window because with cross-platform, the potential is there that you get paired with someone who spent a couple thousand on their PC. That person's performance will most likely be better than that of the average console. I'm not saying that this very approach is wrong and I can respect this. I can understand when players feel that way. And for that very reason we need an opt-in or rather an opt-out from crossplay. I personally prefer the opt-out approach. Just have everyone in, and if someone really doesn't want to use it, then they can opt out. But if you have to enable a feature first, then more than half your player base won't even know that the feature exists in the first place. Case in point, the fact that you can't play for honor against bots and have matchmaking disabled. There are still people that don't know this exists. But it's not just tangible facts that might lead people to not want to play with other platforms. We've had years of fights and arguments between platforms. We won't simply forget these. There was a huge outpour of clips on Twitter when the new Call of Duty launched and you saw shit talking between Xbox and PlayStation players each claiming their platform was superior. We as PC players obviously know that neither is the case, but 
I'm just messing with you. The point is that PC elitism and the Master Race talk has been a funny meme on one hand, but also taken a bit too seriously on the other. This means that every platform needs the option to opt out of it. Let's just look at a concrete example. Do I personally want console players as teammates? Well, the answer is obviously, it depends. Do I want a player like Gizmo on my team? Obviously, yes. Do I want the guy that plays on a 10 year old plasma TV with Wi Fi and at the same time is legally required to wear a helmet when eating soup? No, I don't want that guy. But at the same time, I can also understand the console player that says, I don't want to play with that elitist PC guy who only got his high end machine because his parents bought it for him and thus somehow thinks he's a better gamer, all the while not understanding that it's not a player's fault if the platform they play on is inherently flawed. I mean, I get accused of hating console as well all the time. I obviously play it up a bit each time and while I consider it as friendly banter, others might not. Which brings me to my favourite buzzword when it comes to online games. Toxicity. It's gotten to the point, well years ago already actually, that companies had to actively step in and make guidelines on player behaviour. I guess we already had some, but if you followed common sense, you probably had no problems. What I'm trying to say here is that players have gotten extra sensitive and they get offended easily. This will only get worse when we have players from different platforms being able to communicate with each other all of a sudden. Or maybe not be able to communicate. In For Honor, we PC players have an in-game chat that we can use to type, while console is limited to the other two options, meaning quick chat and in-game voice. Which, let's be honest, everyone has disabled anyways. No one wants to guess whether the immense background static is coming from that guy's mother vacuum in the back or if the person is just a massive mouth breather. I personally hate the fact that players are disabling all forms of communication while playing a team mode in a multiplayer game. It makes absolutely no sense to me, coordination is such an important part, but players refuse it. On the other hand, I do understand not wanting to be berated non-stop by some random clown that thinks calling someone names is a form of motivation. And again, what I'm trying to say with this is that while the developers have quite something ahead of them to make this work, so do we the community. In the end, we're all playing the same game, we are one community. Yeah, we make fun of each other, sometimes it's good fun, other times it goes too far. But I don't think anyone can make serious arguments against crossplay being a good thing for For Honor. Let's not make it harder for the devs than it has to be. I really hope the feature will come in the future, and the quote from the article made me quite optimistic about it actually being a possibility, because initially I thought it was just wishful thinking. But that's it for this topic for now, I will obviously pay close attention to any more details that might come to light. I hope this video was interesting, thanks for watching, laters everybody. Ah oh, shit, that's the wrong outro. Now they're gonna yell at me again and call me an elitist prick. There you go, fixed it.